Hi Tinker Teachers, Daniel here with Tinker and in this next video we're going to take you through how to assign lessons and manage your classrooms in the Tinker dashboard. So let's get started. All right Tinker Teachers, so where I am starting here is in my Tinker Teacher dashboard uh, and over here I've got my classes and these are my two classes right now uh, and um, so we are going to start by opening one of those classes and Right now I have no content, but I also have, since uh, students haven't done any lessons, there's no overview either. So I'll show you what an overview looks like. This is a really good overview of a class that is doing some great work. And you can see lesson completion, certificates, activity, you know, all project creation, lines of code. Uh, so it's really good. Uh, this is actionable. So if you have, you know, you're not doing so well, your students aren't doing so well, you can always assign more, take a look at the grade book, that kind of thing. Uh, so that's a great overview. But what I want to do in this next, uh, you know, a couple minutes is just walk through these tabs. I'm going to go to uh, the lesson uh, assign, uh, the lesson tab here, so we can assign some content. And right now we offer free projects during the week, so you can assign individual. Uh, Pi Day or you know, whatever is happening right now, uh, but we're going to go ahead and assign a course. And great opportunity if you have access to our premium cur curriculum, uh, then I would maybe skip over the 100 and the 300 because these are just beginner uh, courses. But um, for pre-K, you have the ability to assign the Tinker Junior content, but you'll need an iPad. So if you assign that, you need to assign it to a, cl a class that's going to be able to have access to the Tinker Junior app. So they can log in and then they'll unlock that content. Now Space Cadet, Dragon Spells, uh, those are great, great courses. Again, but uh, you know these are beginner, they have voiceover, uh, great for kind of getting started and getting used to Tinker. Uh, and then you have 1A and 1B, and these are more, uh, uh, you know, we're digging into our skills a little bit heavier. Uh, you can see 62 activity, 81 activities there. And then we should jump to 101. Now 101, and once we get into the 101s, the two, 102s, 201s, this is project-based coursework. So let's preview that. And you'll see the difference here. Each one of these lessons in the 101s and the 102s, they come with 15 to 17 lessons. So you could do this in a semester if you wanted students to go one by one, but it's great for a remote learning uh, situation because you can assign the entire course and just let students go at their pace uh, and then kind of catch up with them. It's really up to you how you want to do that. Uh, you can preview any lesson. And in this, I always preview a lesson, kind of see what uh, students are going to be getting here. There's some summative and formative assessment at the end. Uh, but students will have to go in order. It's kind of linear that way. It's scaffolded. You have a great teacher guide here, Programming 101 right here. Introduction, code blocks, vocabulary. Uh, again, this is great. You can use these if you want to. You know, I'll cut and paste them into your own kind of lesson planning library. It's up to you how you uh, like to do that. Some videos for extensions, standards, all that. Uh, and then you have all of the answer keys. And and I I adamantly you know uh, will tell you to uh, make sure to have the answer keys on hand while students uh, may be asking you questions. Uh, so uh, do have those and know where those are. Uh, so again, you can preview these, but uh, also here's a quick button to the answer keys right there too. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to go ahead and assign this class this course to this class. Uh, and if I have multiple classes, um, I, that course was assigned which is great um, uh, if I have multiple classes I can go back and assign that over there as well uh, so I've got 101 is assigned I can go in and then manage those lessons so when you want to unassign something you can unassign everything right there uh, or you can individually unassign a lesson uh, right there with these three dots uh, and I'm gonna do this as an example we're just gonna go ahead and like unassign 12 and unassign 11. Uh, and where do those go? If you go to the bottom of the page, they are in this little area right here, unassigned. So this is just, again, one way to manage if you don't want students to be overwhelmed by all the, all the content at once, uh, you can then unassign that content like that uh, right, right in there. And then it, when you want to reassign it, you just assign it back to your students right there. All right, so if you have a Google Classroom account, 
uh, and you're using Google Classroom. This next example is just to show Google Classroom teachers how this looks. So I'm going to go into my Google Classroom class. This is another one that I brought in from Google Classroom, uh, which I set up in the beginning. There's a video that shows you how to do that as well. Uh, but I'm going to go to Lessons, and then I'm going to go uh, and basically assign a course to this group. Uh, and I have, uh, again, same content, but I just want to show you how this looks on the student side uh, and the teacher side as well. So we're going to go ahead and go to P101. We're going to assign that course to that class. And now with Google Classroom, I'm going to just give you a suggestion. If you assign all lessons in a Google Classroom situation, students are going to get notifications for all 15 lessons. So I'm going to assign them manually. All right, so the course was added. Now I need to go in and manually assign the lessons to the classroom tab. So this is pretty important. Uh, so watch what I do here. Uh, I'm going to go into unassigned and programming 101. I'm going to go into that class and now I can individually assign lessons to my students so they won't get overwhelmed. I think that's pretty big. Assign to class, uh, Tinker Workshop. I'm going to do the first three and they're going to get those notifications and they're going to be okay with that. Just a, a good tip for Google Classroom uh, uh, teachers. Uh, I do have my classroom over here in Google Classroom, and once I assign those, you can then see if I go to my classwork, um, now I've got previous content that I assigned, and then I have these uh, uh, other lessons up here. So uh, just keep in mind that's a, a pretty good tip. Okay, that ends part one of this two-part series. You should be able to assign and manage your lesson content, whether you're a Google Classroom teacher or just a regular Tinker Classroom teacher. Uh, in the next video, uh, you're going to look at and see the grade book. You're going to see the projects tab, showcase, and the students and the awards tabs. Uh, we're going to walk you through those. So uh, get ready and have fun.